The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, company live from TFNN, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday morning. We got some consumer prices out there, pretty much in line, the core side running a little bit hot. And boy, I think we've just gotten used to some pretty staggering numbers because the core number on a monthly basis, you're talking about 0.5% versus 0.4 expected, that's the core number, minus food and energy, 0.5% in a month, folks, you times it by 12, that's a 6% number, and that's actually our headline number right now. Let's jump over to the numbers, markets in positive territory, man, S&Ps. Now, we came into that number already positive by almost 30 points in the S&P, we're another 20 points on top of that. S&Ps right now up by one and a quarter percent at about 50 points, we'll call it in the positive, 49 to be exact. Uh, pushing just above the highs that we had pretty much intraday yesterday. You did get to a spike high yesterday at noon Eastern time to 39.40. So going to be interesting to see where we go from there. Boy, you talk about a far cry from the lows we had coming into the open and just after the opening bell of 38.40. Yet highs pre-market yesterday, this is, of about 39.71. And let's back things up a little bit further for the 20-day hourly and boy, you see where we are on this chart, right? Still pretty low on this chart, man. You make a run higher, 4,000 could be in the cards there. And we're 4,000 lines up, folks. Okay, is that lines up from last Monday? You take the area in this chart all the way down to the lows we saw on Friday. Those lows pretty similar to what we saw on Monday. Again, that's last Monday's action from March 6th. You get down to that price point of 38.50. 4,000 lines up right pretty much at the 618. That's also the area last week that we got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday before the acceleration really began uh, on Thursday with the run on Silicon Valley Bank. Nonetheless, jumping over to the numbers, we'll start it off with this chart from the journal. Inflation pulls back to 6% as the Fed confronts bank failures. Annual inflation slowed from 6.4% in January. So we're dealing with a 6% headline number, but it's important, which is why I pull this up, to take a look at whether you're talking about overall or core. Both of those numbers dipping down slightly, core running a little bit hot versus expectation. Shelter, a huge component of the CPI shelter, I believe, talking about adding 70% of the headline number, the inflation that we got. Let me see if I can find what they said on this one because it was startling, man, in terms of the percentage I had. Yes. Overall, CPI climbed 0.4% in February, and of that 0.4% in February that overall CPI climbed, over 70% of which was due to shelter, and that's where you get the 6% number from earlier. Taking a look at core yet again, okay? These numbers are going up, folks. They're not going down. And what's interesting here is these are the changes in the CPI minus food and energy. This is the core. We just came in at 0.5%. Market was thinking it was going to come in at 0.4%. Look at the run. 0.3% in October, 0.3% in November. You get 0.4% in December, 0.4% in January. You're now running at 0.5% in February. There is no decline on that chart, man. And you can even make the case that look at the comps that we're now dealing with. Okay, so... This yearly comp is February 23 versus February 22. Well, we already had, going into that number, months of 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, okay? What is that? That's 2.8% price appreciation going into the February of 2022 number. Point being, prices were pretty lofty. We're dealing with some comps, and we're still at a hot number. It's going to be interesting to see where we go. Uh, I mentioned to some friends this morning, how often is it, folks? And we got a little bit more information. I wonder where everybody's going to line up now, but pretty close to in line. No huge surprises in that CPI number, which is why we're probably only about 15 points away from where we were coming into that number. But you got everything from a quarter point cut to a 50 basis point hike at the next meeting. Now, these are especially interesting times. I have not been attuned enough to what's going on in the market in my adult life to ever experience something like this, but I don't think it's ever happened, folks. When have things been so in flux 
that you have analysts all the way up and down the line from a 25 basis point cut, which is what Nomura is talking about, okay, and a halt to quantitative tightening versus quantitative easing. I mean, that's just a straight up like the system is about to crumble. We've done enough. We have to pause versus you have some analysts. You had Goldman out there talking about a pause. Seems like the rhetoric is 25, but I think the market right now is pricing in about 12 basis points, which pretty much means it's a toss up between they pause or they go 25 basis points. Well, if they pause, just consider everything I talked about on the core number, man. It is hot. To put it lightly, we're adding 500,000 jobs in January. We're adding 300,000 jobs in February. Uh, what was the wage number we got in some of those non-farm payrolls, right? I think it was something like 7% wage gains if you stayed in your job, 13 to 14% wage gains if you changed your job. These things do not go away, all right? Now, the sentiment change from a little bit of a banking crisis, to put it lightly, as we're only on, what, day four? Really, when you talk about business days, it happened last Thursday. Friday, things really crumbled, and only yesterday – did the market somewhat normalize to the fact that maybe at least the two big banks out there that have gone BK in terms of Silicon Valley and Signature, that maybe things have been stemmed. But it's still pretty early, folks. And I imagine this is going to take some time, and that's a hot CPI number. And it's going to be quite a conundrum that the Fed is in, and they're in it, man. They're talking about it in the den. What kind of a box are they going to be in? They're in a box, man, because all the rhetoric had always been and I can't wait to talk to our man, Kevin Hinks. We talked to him after the first segment coming up in a few minutes. The rhetoric had been, right, we're in a much better spot than Europe. And we still probably are in a much better spot than Europe, but we're not in as good of a spot as we were a week ago. Just imagining what Chairman Powell in front of Congress would have looked like seven days later. That's today, folks. Yes, last week, Tuesday, we were trading at 4,050. Market sold off 300 S&P points to the lows of 38. 40 about and where are we right now on that sell-off we're right back to the 382 sitting at 3840 that's the high of yesterday's action as well uh and we are about 100 points off of the lows you got yesterday on the open in this market it's going to be an interesting one to put it lightly man and yeah taking a look at that run they're lofty numbers and we're getting no relief right now and now we have a fed that may be skittish to keep putting the clamps on the economy at a time when the rates and the and the speed at which they have raised, folks, yeah, we all know now um, the impact that that's had on the Fed. And they're not going to be the only ones, man. I mean, stuff that's going on, some of the equities, right? Um, Bank of America, for instance. Now, they're up big today, as in $2. You're, you're at the price of action that you were at on Friday. You're still well off $34, $35. I think they have $100 billion, something like that, in hold to majority losses sitting on their balance sheet, man. Uh, but you're getting you're getting pops FRC, First Republic, yeah, First Republic, off of a low of 17 yesterday, we're trading at 48, you're going to open up $17 to the upside, so a lot of this fear stemmed that if it was going to happen, maybe it happened yesterday, maybe you heard about it by now, if that was happening, um, Western Alliance, a low of $7 yesterday, we're up another 50% to $40, still well off where it was at 77 prior on that number. But you're seeing the huge relief rallies that we're getting. And boy, it's going to be a wild open when we get it, folks. S&P is charging higher by one and a quarter percent. We're pushing the highs of yesterday back on a five minute chart to illustrate that action right at the highs of yesterday. Interesting up right now, one and a quarter percent. Markets green. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. Talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up about one and a quarter percent. You're positive by 49 points, trading at 39.37. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV at 12 noon Eastern time. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network with your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the team. And let's get right into it. Kevin, we last talked to you Thursday morning and a few things have happened in this market. Uh, good morning. And what do you think of the action, man? Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, you know, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, bond yields were trading around 4%. Yesterday, they traded about 3.4%. So a little bit of change there in terms of yields, a little bit of change there in terms of overall risk. It's been on, and now it seems to be, uh, you know, lightning, you know, di dissipating ever so slightly. So a calm CPI number came out today, mostly in line with the head numbers so that's good for the overall market you've got financials jumping higher here to start the day as overall tommy if you could uh describe this day in one phrase calm is good for the overall market so i think calm that's coming into the market you see it in the vix you see it in yields in the u.s dollar so calm is pretty good tommy and for at least to start the day we'll take it yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Um, the move in notes and bonds, I mean, we're watching the market. We're move, watching the move in notes and bonds, the two-year, the 10-year, uh, and then the recoil even, just amazing in terms of the two-year, the 10-year, the numbers that we have going on right now. What are we dealing with? The 10-year right now, 3.58%, uh, I have, so close to 36 But, yeah, far cry from Thursday, man. What do you think of the debate now, Kevin, with the Fed? We got the CPI number out of the way. We march forward. The Fed meeting begins a week from today. We get an announcement a week from tomorrow. I was talking about at the beginning of my program. Now, this was before the CPI number. But as you mentioned, pretty much in line. Doesn't change things too dramatically in terms of what we're waiting for. Uh, Wall Street is almost a little lost, Kevin, just in terms of the disparity um, 
for what people are looking for. You see Namor out there saying they're going to cut and they're going to end quant quantitative tightening, QT, and then you sure. have Goldman saying they're going to pause, and then I believe you have some people at 25 and then you even have 50 out there. It's a pretty remarkable time when we have whether we're going to cut, we're going to pause, we're going to hike, or we might even hike by 50 basis points. Uh, as a trader, how do you approach that, man, as we are now six trading days away from that, that data? Yeah, it's very noisy, right, with all the speculation about what the Fed's going to do. The only one you're not hearing from is anyone on the Fed because they're in their quiet period. So, yeah, speculation, you, you, I mean, Goldman came out with that note. Um, speculation's all over the board, Tommy, on this number, but the person I want to hear from is Jerome Powell. So, and and there, like I said, remember, when this happened Friday and over the weekend, you didn't hear from Jerome Powell because the Fed's in their quiet period. You heard from Janet Yellen. So she's a member of the administration. I expect Jerome Powell, when they move on interest rates or don't, I don't know what they're going to do, but remember something, Tommy. Historically, lately, Jerome Powell has been leaking to the Wall Street Journal the weekend before the Fed meeting what they're going to do, right? There, there, there's been, I don't know if it's official or unofficial, but he's got an earpiece at the Wall Street Journal that he gives some information to. So um, watch for that and let's see what happens next week. But we haven't heard from any of the Fed members on what's, what effect this is having on them. Is it going to take them to zero? Are they going to stay? Are they going to lighten their, their, their touch? So it, it's hard to say, Tommy, but Jerome Powell, I'm sure he has a plan. We just don't know it. And we're going to find out, man, right? A week from tomorrow, uh, the market, at least they love some calmness. The CPI data point, at least that's not going to be a shock, I guess. That's a relief as we get the VIX pair and things you mentioned, man. We get the S&Ps up 50 points. And it is pretty remarkable. I was watching Futures Sunday night. I hadn't been as excited to open my Thinkorswim platform on my phone on Sunday night, Kevin, at 6 o'clock. I was hanging up with my dad. Giving Tommy a bath after a pool day on Sunday. We said three minutes, man, 5.57 p.m., three minutes until the futures. And I got home that night, Kevin, and to hear, you know, the takes coming out. And I think that's when one of my buddies was posting that Goldman was talking about the pause. I said, man, times have changed. My goodness. And now uh, the whole discussion out there with many joining, whether it's a pause or even a cut, pretty remarkable. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 o'clock coming up today? Fun day to talk, Tommy. We're going to look at Lennar. They have earnings coming out after the bell today. And then we'll have five below. They have, like Folio was going to talk about that, they have earnings tomorrow after the bell. And then we're going to look at, because of this court ruling for Uber and Lyft, we're going to look at DoorDash. Yes. That is up about $4.5 pre-market. So they got a favorable ruling. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're going to trade those today. We're going to... Um, Talk about the airlines, talk about what's going on in several aspects of the market, but we'll trade Lennar, Five Below, and DoorDash today. And I got a chart of Lennar up there, Kevin. I'm out in the middle of Florida near Lakeland. I mentioned before, we got quite a development out here, and I think it's like 1,400 houses, man. It's a combo between Lennar and DR Horton, both of them involved in it. It's such a big house, and that chart is quite a chart, man. As it charges higher from last year, even as rates, we know where they are. What do you think of the conversation, Kevin? My dad was talking about it. Do you think it's going to be more difficult for the Fed, regardless now, to tame inflation? And this is big picture, but you know, I know there's a huge sentiment change that's obviously going to tighten things up a bit when people are worried about banking and your money and, and the availability of funds. Uh, he was talking about his show last night, you know, if that's the issue, right, if inflation is going to be harder, they have to worry now about the problems that are going on with some of these banks. Uh, do hard assets, do real estate become one of the sectors that, you know, and he's he's a little biased when it comes to real estate, my dad. Uh, but he also was pretty spot on with a pullback. But hard assets, Kevin, is this going to be inflation a little bit tougher and maybe hard assets? What's your take on people that are talking about that angle on things? Well, number one, it's very important, I think, Tommy, to not make a sweeping policy decision based off one bank that, that acted, I, I think, horribly. For them to not hedge a portfolio and have the, the numbers in the portfolio that big, this was pilot error at SBB, Tommy. Make no mistake. They had a portfolio that was way too big, unhedged, and that's where they ran into problems, Tommy. So yeah. I don't know if you paint with a broad brush with the entire sector because one bank 
did a horrible job of managing their risk. Yeah, it's remarkable. We all got a quick lesson in bank balance sheets, man. And I think it blew us all away a little bit in terms of that type of capital, that type of risk, um, and just not being a little forward looking. I mean, even myself, man, talking about rates, you know, you lock yourself into some duration, folks. We're getting a quick lesson, but man, it's wild what they did. Uh, Kevin, we appreciate the time on a busy morning as always, man. We'll be watching the show today and we look forward to talking to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard them. They're talking about three great stocks. And uh, yeah, Lennar in particular. I'll be interested to check out Fast Market at 12. I was looking at this earlier, right? And Because I was looking at it because my dad was talking about it last night. And it's a real case, man. Kevin makes a great case and I agree with him. Okay. And there are other banks that probably they've, they've made some decisions that have allowed them to be in a spot that is some way similar to what Silicon Valley is in terms of their holdings the hold to maturity losses on their balance sheet, how that reflects on their balance sheet if they're ever forced to take those losses versus their liquid liquidity issues. Uh, but it is a one-off issue in terms of that bank. And I don't know if that's going to be something that's going to dry things up that's going to have the impact on inflation. And if that's what happens, you better believe, man, inflation gets sticky and wages are going up 7 to 15 percent, right, depending on if you're changing jobs. People are going to use those wages to buy houses and commodities. They go into the house. So um, the prices of houses we will be right back for the open, folks. It's going to be a wild one. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps opening up about 1.4% to the positive side right now, trading at 39.44. NASDAQ 100 up about 163 points right now, 12,220. We're going to jump to the S&Ps real quick. We're going to go back to a daily. I'm going to take off some of these numbers. We've got a moving average here. And look where, interesting, right? Before I take that one off, let's go back for a second. This is the 200-day moving average. Yeah, I believe that is. All right, we'll put that back on. Yeah, it's a simple moving average. But I want to show you some of the Fibonacci levels because if you're looking for some Fibonacci levels, folks, if you're looking for some price action in terms of where maybe you get into this market, I tell you, 4,000 would be a nice entry point to the short side. You take a look at where we are. That's going to line up from the sell-off we had all of last week. Remember, that was quite a correction last week. Okay, we got Chairman Powell kicking things off last Tuesday with higher for longer. And then we got the um, banking collapse of Thursday, which is really where the escalation began at a price point of 4,000 in the S&Ps all the way down to 3850 towards the action on Friday. You go back up to 4,000, you're talking about 3990, maybe you're talking about 3980, 4,000. We did get as high on Thursday to its price point about 4,020. You're talking about the 618 of the move lower. Be interesting, right? Nice round number, 4,000. Maybe, you, maybe, excuse me, maybe you get up to that price point. Now, if you even go back further, Okay, we're talking about going back to basically the highs we had in February. You go back to the highs of February, you take your Fibonacci there, you go all the way down to the bottoms to the lows. Okay, and you're talking about an area of confluence that rests. The 382 of that big move, okay, brings you to a point of about 39.73. So you can see you have confluence there from about 39.73 to 39.90 in the S&Ps. And that move now is the month long move lower, the whole move. And that's also the move that we had for the 618 of the move we had last week going into the lows we had of Friday and Monday. S&P's up 55. It's going to be an interesting one. The day is young, folks. We're two minutes and 28 seconds into the trading day. So, yes, we're holding on to those gains. The VIX is plummeting. But, boy, it's going to be interesting to see how the day progresses. Uh, Apple yesterday, right? Talk about uh, flocking to safety. Some of these equities, you really saw who shined here. Apple up another nine tenths percent today, but it was up big nicely early yesterday, even when the market was in a bit of a trouble, bit of trouble. Microsoft up 1.5 percent today. Amazon shares we jump over up three quarters percent today. We jump over to Google up about two percent. Tesla shares this morning up 3.3 percent so far. We jump over to United down 5.1 percent for United. Let's jump over to some of the headlines I have pulled up. We started off. First quarter loss is what they'll be looking for, for United. They forecast a first quarter loss, weaker demand growth compared with other months and higher fuel costs. And they are scheduled to present a J.P. Morgan industry conference today. Not what they wanted to push out, I'm sure. So they are lower in as we open up. All right. Let's see where else we go. Yeah, you got to talk about Mr. Barney Frank, right? The Dodd-Frank bill. He's made $2.6 million in compensation, I believe, since the year 2016. Last year alone, he's gotten over $300,000. Compensation of $121,750 and stock awards of $180,000. This is for being on the board of, is it Signature? Yes, it's Signature Bank. Now, it's important to realize what happened here, right? These banks have... All argued for less regulation. They got less regulation. What ended up happening? Um, they've been doing things, and they've been leveraged to the point that they probably would not have been able to do that had they been under the regulation that he himself pushed through in 2010 and then weakened in 2018. Now, you jump to the article in 2018, folks, that talks about this. is the journal article from May 22nd of 2018. Headline, Bank Deregulation Bill, Bill Clears Congress. This is during President Trump. You got Paul Ryan, the House Speaker at the time up there, 258 to 159. I believe you got 33. Yes, 33 Democrats sided with the Republicans and got it done. So not some radical bill at the time, right? Uh, but what it did specifically, okay, is it exempted banks under 250,000, 250 billion. It raised the threshold from 50 billion, which, which both signature and... Silicon Valley at 100 and 200 would have been raised it from 50 to 250 billion dollars in assets in terms of the banks that taste face tighter oversight. Uh, you have here. It really one of the a quote from 
somebody in the markets there at the time. It really does take the handcuffs handcuffs off all but 13 U.S. banks. That would be the banks that are bigger than $250 billion in market cap at that time. Now, others are going to say, okay, that, and this, this is going to be the detractors here. For instance, Jerome Powell has said the Fed was respond to the bill by seeking public input for deciding which firms less than $250 billion in assets should get regulatory relief. And this is because nothing in the bill changes their broad authority to apply strict rules to firms they view as risky, even if they have less than $250 billion in assets. That was the caveat, okay? So they passed this bill and they said, listen, it's going to be okay because we have the Federal Reserve. And Chairman Powell will always have the ability as a regulator to say, yes, you do fall under that, but for specific reasons, you still pose a systematic, well, what just happened, right? They didn't regulate those banks saying that they were systematic. They failed, and then they say they're systematic. It's unfortunate. It speaks to lobbying, and it speaks to our own politicians and the revolving door that they go into Congress, and then they come out, and they lobby, and that would be a great area, folks, that I think there could be some partisanship. And, you know, government is about compromise. And, man, it's so hard to compromise on so much right now in terms of what we are doing in politics. Uh, but keep that one in your mind. I bring it up because, man, no matter what you think about it, right, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, pretty sure whether you're talking about term limits and lobbying, all right, if you don't want to go into government because you can't leave government and lobby, is that really going to be something that will crush our country if we don't let people be in politics because they need to go lobby afterwards? There should, there should be an exemption for X amount of years, at least, if not forever. What would be the harm? Um, because the revolving door, and you see it there, there's no reason why he should have been on the board of a bank that he set up regulation to tie in. He goes on that bank. He, he makes millions. And he decreases that regulation, and then we have a banking crisis, and the Fed has to come and step in anyway. And it's it's a it's a huge difference with a bailout because there is some moral hazard, right? There's definitely moral hazard when you think about the fact that all the shareholders got wiped out, and everybody that was running the bank lost a job, and that CEO of Silicon Valley Bank, you know, had a bank that was worth forty billion dollars at one point, and now. You know, he did sell some shares recently, so it's not like he's broke. He's probably got millions, but nonetheless, um, quite a far cry. But not exactly how Swiss. They should have had risks set up. They should have had their stuff hedged. They should have been paying for that hedge. Um, and customers should have known better than to be trusting a bank with hundreds of millions of dollars like Roku, well above the insurance limits, if they weren't certain that that bank was collateralized to the point that they were sure. Otherwise, go bank with a big bank. Why were they doing it? They were probably getting better deals for certain things, for profit, transaction, et cetera. Uh, and at the same time, my dad's texting me. It goes both ways, and it's everywhere. You have the bank CEO of Silicon Valley that I'm talking about on the board of the Federal Reserve of San Francisco. Francisco, I believe. Right? So everywhere. S&P's up 59 points. We're up 1.5%. We got the NASDAQ 100 up 192. Dow up 319. Stay tuned, folks. We'll talk about some of the other equities moving this morning. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up about 60 points right now. NASDAQ 100, you just went over 200 points to the upside, 12,252. We're up one and two-thirds percent in the NASDAQ. You're up a percent in the Dow. You're up 1.5 percent in the S&Ps, and you're up 3 percent right now in the Russell. And, yeah, some of these banks. So I think some of these banks are getting halted with upside circuit breaker type. That's the news that keeps hitting. You go... Western Alliance up 40% right now. And if you jump over even on the Thinkorswim platform, um, halted on Circuit Breaker, they work both ways. Okay. Yeah, because you're seeing it there. You're seeing it in PacWest up 47.9%. I believe that one had it as well. Let's see how First Republic's trading up 48% right now. And that's how this closed yesterday when you were trading well off the lows yesterday as well. Some of these stocks you're running, let's see, Char Schwab up another 10%, but that's a little bit of a sell-off. So let's put it back to a five-minute chart. They actually sell off on the open. Look at that. So maybe not just the case yet. Yeah, I saw Bank of America had quite a sell-off on the open right now, still up 3.5% right now. Look at the sell-off in JP Morgan, man. You got volatility everywhere. JP Morgan still up 1.2% right now. Goldman Sachs up about 3% to 324. Morgan Stanley up about 3.7% right now with the S&Ps up 1.55%. All right, what else we have pulled up here? So we got CPI. We have the Fed coming up a week from tomorrow. And we are basically over the data we're going to get. It's going to be interesting to see how we digest everything. I mean, some of these banks right now, Moody's puts them on a list. Uh, First Republic, five banks on the downgrade watch. Western Alliance, Comerica among the banks and getting into them. And some of the ones that we just pulled up right now. And they're all trading dramatically higher. And these ratings agencies, man, it's quite a racket, right? In terms of always after the fact. Yeah, and Credit Suisse, man, that's a whole nother story indeed. I was listening to the CEO on this morning. Um, material control lapses after an SEC was telling them to look into it. Outflows not reversed at lower levels. You know, I, I clicked on this article earlier this morning on Bloomberg, right? Too big to fail lenders rake in deposits after three banks fail. I was like, oh, this should be good. I bet, you know, we all know that, right? So tell me how it's happening. And they have no numbers in here at all. All they talk about is that uh, they're all seeing infos. And of course they are, folks. You know, you either have funds in a bank that are under 250000 or you make sure it is a big bank that is systematically a risk to the economy. Now... It's interesting that Silicon Valley goes BK when they've argued they are not. Signature has obviously argued that. You got Barney Frank out there saying that 
it didn't have to do with the regulation. But see through that stuff, folks, because anybody can see that, of course, it had to do with the regulation. The regulation specifically exempted banks from $50 billion to $250 billion of having the regulations that they put in place on the Dodd-Frank bill. And those banks fell within that limit, and they got really out of line, and they're too big to fail, and so the government steps in. It's everything that they were supposed to prevent. Uh, he just collected millions to do it on the other side. Remarkable, right? Let's jump over to Uber. So interesting that they win a California appeal uh, that, yes, they can consider employees as contractors. So it has a pretty big impact for Uber, up 8%, 8.1% so far today. You have Lyft shares, the whole gig economy. Exactly same percentage, 8.8%. You heard Kevin Hanks. They'll be talking a little DoorDash coming up on Fast Market at 12 o'clock. DoorDash up about 7.8, call it 8% right now. All those spiking higher. Let's see how some of the other airlines are trading on that United news. Yeah, so American traded down, but when with the move we're getting right now, you got positive action even on the airlines. Delta, yeah, up 1.8%. Let's see how Carnival's trading. Carnival up 2.6. Let's take a look at this thing. Yeah, it's going to be a critical area. It's been in this downtrend channel for two years. Crazy, man. When things were supposed to break out in March of 2021, right, we start getting the vaccine. You have Carnival, trade from $7 and change up to $31, and it's been a downtrend channel since then. Now, we just got back within that channel line. Let's put it on a little bit longer term. And what's so crazy, right, and I brought this up on the show before, is that it was in this channel line. Let's put it back even further. It was in this channel line from when it peaked out at the beginning of 2018. COVID exacerbated it. It got back up. And man, if you had that channel line, it just pegged, pegged the channel line to the upside. And then we trade lower. You put it back on the five year. You zoom in on just the channel we've had the last couple of years. And yeah, that's a break within that channel line, man. You know, I've been on one cruise in my life. I live in Florida. We're very fortunate in terms of you just drive across the state. Right, you go to a port, let alone you can go out of Tampa, but I think I went out of Port Canaveral a lot of the time I did. Uh, I think it was a simple three-day Mexico cruise on Carnival or something like that. But boy, I don't find myself, in, and I was always open to it, just never did it. So yeah, I'll go on a cruise again, maybe maybe go on a little bit of a longer cruise, because if you go on the short cruises, you get the smallest boats most of the time. You go on the longer cruises, you get the bigger, more extravagant boats. It would make sense as you're out there a week or two or something like that. Two would probably be a little much depending on the boat and the experience and where you're going. But I don't find myself thinking about going cruising anytime soon, folks. It's just not going to happen. Maybe in a year or two, maybe when Tommy's a little bit older, I don't feel like getting stuck on a boat with a two-year-old uh, if COVID breaks out, let alone anything else on that cruise ship. So it's a little, a little bit different. Uh, okay, so maybe they're going to be bumping. Maybe they're back within that channel line because you were above it for a couple months and now you're below it. But this market, this market's trading higher right now, up 66 points. Check it out. 39.55, and so yeah, as I said, if you're looking for an area to short this thing, I'd be looking for the area right really chopped around uh, the middle of last year before this banking crisis kind of began, you know? Maybe we get the banking crisis out of the way, you trade back to where you were after Chairman Powell appeared on Tuesday at a price point of about 4,000, that gets you back to a 618 of this move, it gets you back to a 382 of the move prior. But boy, you start getting about 4,050, 4,080 folks in this market, the Fed still has a task, and core numbers are hot, and, and I'm not able to figure out how inflation gets tamed if they just stop where we are and let it play out for that long. A week ago, today, we were talking about that inflation's been sticky, and the Fed might need to go 50 basis points. You heard Kevin's tank. It's one bank off. And here's the kicker. If this bank had been allowed to completely fail to the tune of no insured balances above 250 k and all those venture capital funds took the haircut— and remember, folks, they wouldn't have gotten wiped out, okay? The bank just would have been forced to take the losses they had on their books for the long maturity treasuries they had. They would have been short 100% of what they needed, and maybe they come in at 60%, 70% on the dollar, something like that, okay? That, if that had happened, yes, this that could have been a fear ripping across the market that the Fed would have been forced dramatically, and that probably could have had more of an impact on inflation, right? If we had a wipeout of investors investors, depositors, okay? But that didn't happen. So everybody got made whole except for one company that went, went BK, and now there's actually going to be looser credit lines for the banks put in place. And we just got a hot core CPI. 
and yeah, the regional banks, they're wounded, man. They are wounded. I agree, Duffy. Um, but the Fed is swooping in here, man, and they're going to get ahead of the line. And I think they're going to allow those banks the capital they need. And here's a perfect segue what we're going to talk about next, man. Where is it? Yeah. Key lender to regional banks raised, raised $89 billion yesterday. $89 billion. We'll talk about this because keep this in mind. Okay, this is not 2008 and the Fed stepped in in a big way. And now you have one of the lenders of next to last resort beefing up their balance sheet. Stay tuned, folks just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, DFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P up 56 points. That's 1.45% in the positive. We paired, uh, what do we got? About a 10-point pullback from the highs of 39.57, but that's barely a red bar since we've got that 8.30 volatility in the markets. And jumping back to the article I was talking about, and so this is the part to consider, right, in terms of you have a different scenario in terms of the Fed is going to be there to prop up these banks to avoid bank runs, to guarantee depositors. That might not be the tightness, even with a market sentiment that could be pretty skittish right now. And you gotta keep in context, folks. I'm talking about skittish market sentiment, right? But meanwhile, we are now 104 points off of the lows of yesterday and Friday. 
And we are basically within a stone's throw of where this market was trading at last Wednesday, when if you recall, that was when Chairman Powell was kind of talking about maybe pairing back some of what he talked about on Tuesday before we had the banking crisis of Thursday. Now, they have here $88.7 billion is what they just raised. This is the Federal Home Loan Bank, okay? It is a system of 11 regional banks, depression era backstop that private banks can use for short-term funding without the stigma of taking money from the Fed. It's basically the lender of next to last resort. You don't go to the Fed because then you're, that's the lender of last resort. So where do you go? You go to the Federal Home Loan Bank. Well, they just ramped up. They were trying to raise $64 billion. They raised $88.7 billion is the number they have to make sure that they can provide loans to private banks, regional banks, to keep them in the business. Uh, that's a remarkable number when you think about it, folks, in terms of the number out there. And the reason why it's not going to go haywire is because worst case scenario, just trying to think this out, worst case scenario, what's going on is most of these banks have U.S. treasuries or mortgage back that are still reliable and good credit quality on their books that have gotten destroyed in value because of their rates. Worst case scenario, you're going to see the feds come in and just take those assets over, hold them on their books for as long as it has to go and make sure everybody gets made whole. So I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's what markets figured out. But pay attention to inflation, man, because that's not going away. Thanks so much, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.